Hello everyone, welcome to the Stock Car Spectacle Race Review. I'm Ian Jordson. I'm Mike Gamble. And I'm Nick Kinsley. And boys, we had a crazy weekend at the Roval. Roval never disappoints. Oh my god, <laughs> oh, it was yeah. nuts. And we'll talk a little bit about the Richmond Race Review since we didn't get into that last week. But first, let's get into our diecast of the week. Nick, what you got, bud? All right, so I got the 2018 uh, Trevor Bain. It's a 25-year anniversary Daytona 500 car. This car was sweet. I actually have a door panel off this car. It's actually right here. So to have that, it's pretty It's pretty neat because he only ran this scheme a couple of times before the Advocate Rehydrate scheme came aboard after he found out he lost his ride to Kansas. So I got that, but I also got this bad boy. This is a race used pit crew helmet from 20, the 2017 season, and yes, it does fit. All right. <laughs> let's put this bad boy on. Oh, See, yeah. it fits. Uh, let's let's make a pit stop. Yep. Let's get the show on Change the Change a tire, film a podcast. Change a tire, film a podcast. Let's there do it. All right. Hey, hey, you should leave that on for the whole show. I'm saying you should leave that on the whole time. I mean, as long as I can be heard, then I'll I... I say, you're going to sound a little bit like Kenny from South Park, but hey, it's <laughs> all right, man. Let's do it. All right. Also, you have the 164, 124, <laughs> and door of the real car for this car. Yeah, I Talk little, about I committed to the car. Right too. So, yeah. yeah, committed to the car that cost me... Uh, $75 from the Racing Warehouse on Facebook. Yeah, so. That's not a bad price. Yeah, yeah, hell yeah. I got it for a steal. Yeah, that's a huge steal. Yeah. 75 bucks for a door panel. Yeah, Man, that race car just makes me so sad because I remember they made this big deal. Remember they had all these yeah, articles come Bain out. Trevor Bain, back, back to black. black yeah. like, oh, and we thought it was going to be a new sick. attitude season. Like, let's go but yeah. no, no, no. and he only ever ran that car like a handful of times because it, it ran was rehydrate they ran a version of that the 500 but it had the 25th anniversary logo on the hood not what, the advocate yeah. logo what they did was they ran this scheme up until trevor found out he was losing his ride and that's when rehydrate came on board and mm. that's when the car color changed yeah that stunk gotcha yeah because that's probably Honestly, Trevor's best looking car, right next to his Wood Brothers car. Oh, yeah. Which is so weird because he's had so many like cool colored schemes. It's such a basic, it's like the matte black. Yeah, that was the oh, matte black man, because really all you it. have on here is Advocare. That's it. Right. And then a little 25 year anniversary. So yeah. yeah. I mean, all Nothing, Earnhardt yeah, had was good wrench and a number yeah. three on there. So. Yeah. Sometimes basics beautiful. Exactly. Like my dad's big into basic. Like his favorite uniforms in all sports are Alabama football, just red and white with the numbers on there. Yeah. K-I-S-S, keep it simple, stupid. Exactly, yeah. exactly. That's awesome. So yeah. what you got, Mike? So I went for a double whammy for mine since uh, one of my guys, Chase, won at the weekend at the Roval, and we're going into another track where he's won before. In the playoffs, Dover, I brought the Dover race win from the playoffs from last year. So um, keeping up with my tradition, I have either purchased and already have or have pre-ordered all six of Chase Elliott's race win cars. So... And this is the first one. I'm starting to get a little disappointed. Like, you and I were kind of talking before we started filming. He's starting to win a lot in the Napa car, so I'm just going to have a bunch of the same-looking car. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm not big on getting the color chroma race wins, like we are also saying, too, because I like to get it authentic as possible to the actual car he ran in the race. Right. So, But, yeah, the only thing that's weird with this die cast, too, is um, we'll have to kind of get a second camera on this, but it doesn't have, like, a passenger window again. Right. Some die casts have it, some don't. I understand why, like, the Watkins Glen yeah. ones don't and yeah. stuff, but... Dover was one I really didn't understand why they did that. So yeah, exactly. It's, it's probably something I'm missing. Probably Some a viewer lawyer. or something will comment, let us know something Some I'm not lawyer. thinking about. But yeah. Yeah, it could be. And I'm kind of the same way with you. Like, uh, I got all of Harvick's wins from last year. Yeah. And, like, three-fourths of them are from the Jimmy John's scheme. Right. So I kind of got, like, just a, like no, my dude. whole row of them is Jimmy John's cars. Yeah. yeah. I can't imagine being a fan of a guy like that. Like, thank God I didn't have money in my bank account when I was a big Jeff Gordon fan as a yeah. little kid. Because trying to get all of Harvick's wins would probably put you in, like, the six figures. Oh, yeah. I don't try to get yeah. every win. That would be pretty crazy. easy being a Trevor Bain fan. I only had to buy three of them. Yeah. So. <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess uh, one of the curses of having a good driver. <laughs> it's a blessing and a curse. Yeah, yeah. exactly. I, I am so. just the curse. I am the curse on every yeah. single driver, so I'm coming for Harvick next year. Oh, God. <laughs> I'm coming on the Harvick bandwagon. <laughs> no. Your dad's going to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> I think you need to do, like, the running joke. Just become a Kyle Busch fan. Yeah, yeah. just to get him out uh, next year. So if Daniel Hammer doesn't get a ride next year, it's full-on Team BJ McLeod Motorsports. <laughs> <laughs> You'll see me rocking the pit crew shirt and everything. I'm excited to jump on board. 
board. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully that brings something up. We're still calling you NJ McCloud. NJ McCloud. <laughs> I like it. So. Alrighty, what do you got for All right, us? So today? speaking of curses, I can't even see it through yeah. the fucking candle. <laughs> what we got going on? Over All here? right, so I got Ricky Stenhouse's Fifth Third Talladega Wind Diecast. Nice. Um, I think a sharp looking car. Yeah. Probably the only car, honestly, that I think that kind of looks good in color chrome. I uh, got it signed by Ricky Stenhouse and signed by uh, the Cat in the Hat, Jack nice. Roush himself. Is nice. that really Jack Roush's signature? I believe so. Because that doesn't look anything like mine. Yeah, I'd have to actually take a look now that we're yeah. looking at it a little more. Well, I mean, I he, he is Roush. old. Yeah. He's been through a lot in his life, <laughs> so. Could be. That does not look like plane crashes, but, yeah. <laughs> The only thing that's weird with that one, maybe it's a die cast, we didn't have room, but he usually signs Jack yeah, Roush USA. USA. Oh, really? Yeah, so. A die cast are weird, and again, I've got. Three die casts signed by Bubba, and none of the signatures know it. Right, they'll either be Daryl Wallace know, or right, Bubba Wallace. And I know they're his signatures are yeah. not fake because they're from Plan B sales. But yeah, one's Daryl Wallace Jr., one's Bubba Wallace, and one's Bubba Wallace, but it doesn't quite look the same as the other Bubba right. Wallace. So Yeah, I got yeah. this from Lionel, so if it's not real, then... Uh, I, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and give I, you the benefit of the doubt on that yeah. one. Yeah, <laughs> and then I got some words to uh, yeah. talk to them. We're going to have a very strongly written email here. Exactly. The and then I got uh, Stenhouse's... Uh, Fast and all, 164 there. Nice. And then uh, I actually got this at an antique shop. Oh, Matt Kenseth, oh, 17. I uh, love those DeWalt cars. Yeah, the, the Ford Taurus. Yes. Number, uh, 2000, Ford I guess. Taurus. So, yeah, I found this, and I feel like I had to bring it out since I, yeah. you know, we're going to have 17 really on sick. the mine today. Yeah, I'll get an element yeah. later. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Big so, star that came out. Holy shit. Um, exactly. I'll tell you what, though. I'm a big Ford guy. Mm -hmm. I love the Gen 4 bodies. But man, I thought the Taurus were just ugly. As <laughs> Monte Carlo's look great. Um, Dodge. Pontiacs look great. When Dodge came, the Dodge looked great. But those Taurus look like grandpa cars out there running. <laughs> exactly. So, I, I never liked the Taurus yeah. at all. <laughs> I would have loved to have seen if they would have had a different car they could have used for their stock body for the Gen 4. But yeah, you know what? I still take the Gen 4s back in a heartbeat. So. Oh, yeah, without a doubt. Can yeah. you imagine if the Mustangs were on the Gen 4? Oh, yeah, that'd have been sick. That would have been really, really nice. cool. So. But, yeah, that's our die cast of the week. Yes, sir. So, uh, let's get into the Charlotte Roval. Actually, let's talk about Richmond first. So, yeah, Richmond, Martin Truex Jr. spins <clears throat> with a handful of laps to go, and then he still comes back and he wins the damn race, like... He was on a mission in the first yeah. round. Oh, yeah. I'll give him that. He's definitely one to watch. He's been one to watch all year. But going in, winning the first two races of the round, you got to think, like, oh, I'm mad right now. We're going to keep this going. So, yeah, impressive by Truex. Not a fan of his at all, but still impressive he can win two out of the three races in the yeah. round. Exactly. And then we had Christopher Bell winning the Xfinity race on Saturday. Oh, of course. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, I course. mean, he's, he's a stud. And. You know, he's going to that 95, and I'm just, I can't wait to see what he does in that car. Yeah. Because he's either going to be a bust, or he's going to be a... Is, I will put, if Christopher Bell turns out to be a bust, no. holy cow, that would be like the biggest no. bust in NASCAR history. Right? I don't yeah. think he's going to be a bust. I don't think he's going to come in and win five races or anything next no. year, especially being in the LFR equipment. But I think he's going to have a really solid competitive rookie season. You're going to see a lot of promise from him. Oh, but yeah. Go back real fast to the cup thing. You saw two kind of trends that started with that weekend um, that also happened again in the Roval. You had the winner end up having a little late or mid yeah. or late race drama, getting wrecked or spinning or hitting something. At the damn tree. Yep. By Stenhouse. Yep. By <laughs> Stenhouse, I say. And Stenhouse having a little drama to start the whole weekend off there. Going yep. into Richmond and then everything that happened later, which we'll talk about. So I always thought that was kind of weird the way that all kind of played out and ended up having bigger storylines branch off. Oh, yeah. From stuff we haven't even talked about because we didn't do a show last week. Uh, so, yeah, a lot to talk about. So, yeah, it was definitely a crazy two weeks. And yeah. Can't wait to start talking about it. But uh, let's get into the Xfinity race at the Roval. Yes, sir. Uh, Chase Briscoe won his first career uh, poll at I the mean, Roval. He was last year's defending race winner. He's got he's got speed. He wins the poll. I was hoping for a good day out of that car. Oh, yeah, without yeah. a doubt, without a doubt. And then uh, Reddick misses the chicane. Right away on lap one. Yeah. Right. There was problems because he stopped on the back stretch, but he's not supposed to stop there. So when he got back going again, they're like, oh, you got to stop right here, man. So yeah. And even pretty, Rick Allen thought that he was supposed was like, to stop on the back. Yeah, Letarte thought, thought, thought that. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody else had any idea what was going like on. It's just like a normal road course where if you miss something, you just stop right there for two seconds. 
and then go. go. Yeah. But yeah, that's but it's not there but though. It's yeah, not exactly. There. I'm not a big fan of that rule with the robo. Well, my only big problem with it is they go to a driver's meeting, they go over everything there, they give every driver an opportunity to ask questions if something's not clear. Go back in time and look into some of there's some legendary stories and stuff that happen in these driver's meetings and stuff which are oh, yeah. kind of funny. But you have all that time that if there's something you don't understand, ask. If there's something that you're not quite clear on, get clarification. So when it comes to something like that, yeah, it's kind of a weird rule, um, but you know what? There's really no excuse because oh, you yeah. had every opportunity to get it right. So mm -hmm. there is definitely some real bad inconsistencies by the NASCAR officials this weekend. Oh, like, for sure. Saying a couple times Christopher Bell missed the chicane, and they were like, "Oh, we're not gonna penalize you," and then like two minutes later, like, "Oh yeah, we are gonna penalize you." Like, yeah. you gotta have a clear distinction of what's a penalty there and what is not. Again, right. why I really don't like the rule right. because. I get it, but if they're going to be inconsistent with it. Right. You saw a lot of really why it would be difficult to be a race official in NASCAR because in both the Xfinity race and the Cup race, you had a handful of cautions that there really didn't seem to be a consistent reason reasoning behind why they'd call it. One, it would be a car that spins off track and really wouldn't have any kind of play into what's going on in the race. Exactly. Get back in line and keep racing. Green stays out. And then you'd have the exact same kind of scenario happen, and they throw the yellow. So it's like there's no consistency with it. And I know every kind of case is going to be a little different, but man, it was just really weird to see and confusing as we're sitting there watching both races. Like, how is how is that a they, caution? Yeah, yeah. It was like one caution. The guy he stopped on the track, and they didn't call the caution. But then it was another one where he spun out. But he was like off the track, and then they called the caution. Yeah, it was a uh, priest. He like spun into the chicane, yeah, right. and, and then he just took off. Like he kept going, and they called the caution. Like that didn't make any sense to me at all. Well, the only thing I noticed, and maybe this is it, and maybe we're gonna get more clarification as the week goes, because we're obviously filming the day after the race. Right. It really hasn't been too much come out yet. Um, I noticed no matter it seemed to, no matter what happened in the chicane, they were just putting it out. Right. So maybe that had something to do with it because it's such a dangerous part of the right. course. Yeah. But everywhere else, that they just seemed to be playing like completely different rules. So I don't, I don't know. I thought that was kind of actually a little disappointing. And there were a couple times I felt like in both races they put the yellow out just to kind of referee the race a little bit. Right. So the one time, sorry for you, buddy, but your boy Harvick had like a seven second lead. Oh yeah, he <laughs> got screwed that one time. Anyway. Oh yeah, and then. There goes Chase. Exactly. So, <laughs> and then uh, Chase Briscoe, we have him winning stage one. Hell of a performance by him. Yeah. Taking off yeah. from the pole. Cole Custer wins uh, stage two. And then on lap 44, we had a crazy wreck going into Heartburn Turn. <laughs> Which uh, I love. Yeah, that's a, such a great name, right. Heartburn Turn. Uh, we had Justin Allgaier going four wide, making a stupid move into the Heartburn Turn. Uh, sending uh, Ryan Truex spinning, and then Cole Custer and Nemechek kind of got collected within the whole thing. So that was wild. Yeah. You, you always kind of expect that going into that turn there, because it's you know oh, they're yeah, going what, off a restart. That's what makes the roll so crazy. Is right. The damn restarts is because everybody seems to miss turn one at least one time. And right. Yeah. But you can win. And it doesn't you can matter win, where you're at. You have the chance to get collected in that. Yeah. Somebody no else matter where you're at. Yeah. Right. For both races, I remember every time that they would go into turn one, I would have like my hand on my heart, ready to have a heart attack. Because you're just expecting yeah. something to happen. Oh yeah, because right. these guys are gonna go three and four wide. You can't do that there right. if you're not trying to cause some trouble. I just had the Kozlowski incident, and, like replaying oh, yeah. through my head, watching these restarts. Like, oh my god, they're all gonna pile up right, right. here. Oh, it was nuts. And then uh, we had Bell miss the front stretch in the chicane Ooh, from Bell and Briscoe. Right. He was pretty pissed yeah. about that. Bell got three. pissed off, and then he just spun Briscoe after they got into turn one. Yeah. That that's, was so. That's like the most yeah. angry thing I've ever seen Chris from. Oh, Bell yeah, because he's a pretty cool, calm, collector right. guy. Right, he usually yeah. is, but hey, he, he wanted to win the race, and he had a car capable of doing it, too. He, yeah. He was fast during the, the whole race, so. Exactly. Get taken out like that, yeah. He, be a little angry exactly yeah. and then we had the dinger he takes the lead on the restart finally. with three to go finally the dinger gets a win wins the race and yeah. passes, passes inspection, inspection. that's oh. just as big as the win so <laughs> oh yeah i will tell i give him a lot of credit because not only was the the race and the win itself really impressive but the aggressive but clean pass on the roval for the lead was just yeah. awesome oh, yeah. man like he's in a really kind of precarious situation because you know he wants to go win but you don't want to be that guy that goes in there and starts taking out playoff drivers and right. has implications on it. 
Um, so, yeah, really good to see for him. Past inspection, too. Racing guys looking down at him for once. So oh, yeah. Finally. That was, finally. Cool. <laughs> yeah. that was great. Yeah, good so for I him. I think what comes from that, this is kind of going to get into my lightning round question, is A.J. Allmendinger, I think he deserves a ride. I, I don't know if that's what he wants to do, if he wants to come back into NASCAR, because he really only ran the road course races this year and the one day Daytona race. So, yeah, does this kind of, from here, does A.J. come back to NASCAR? And if he does... Does he deserve it, and where would he go? See, I think he does deserve it, and I think he would definitely go for the Xfinity Series because they've run a lot of road courses, courses. and, you know, he's almost, he's been really close to wins at almost every road course this season. So, yeah, I think he definitely does. I don't know where the hell they're going to put him. I know they got a lot of rides opening up with these, you know, Xfinity guys moving up to the Cup Series. Right. So, who knows? He might have, you know, Double zero, the number two, you'd be in the 20 if yeah, Joe Gibbs wants to bring cars, him in. Yeah. yeah. Who knows? No, no, no. I mean, if you want a winner, he's right there because he yeah, almost won Daytona, like, too, before they so uh, could go out right. and get it done. Exactly. Whoa. He still got it. Do we know that's something he wants to do? I don't know if he's looking to come back full time. Yeah. I haven't seen anything on that. Mm-hmm. I mean, I wonder if he's just perfectly content running a handful of the, the races that he kind of handpicks for the series, running some sports car stuff, spending more time at home, and that kind of thing. Um, If he wants to come back, I mean, he's a talented enough driver. He's a great story being the poster child for the road to recovery. I think think there's a lot of merit to putting him in a a race car, and especially in a competitive one. Um, But I just don't know if that's something he's going to want to do. If he does, he'll have his opportunity. He seems pretty settled with the whole broadcasting job with NBC. And he's really good at that. He's the races, too. Right. Yeah. Yeah, he does a lot of the IMSA sports car racing, um, picking and choosing his races here. Just, I just don't know how you make all that fit. So yeah. it would be a lifestyle change again for me to have to go back to full time racing. So oh, yeah, I don't definitely. know if that's something he's going to want to do. You know exactly because when so guys get out of it, they they kind of want to. Mm-hmm. Kind of like, right. ah, they realize like, okay. oh, this is actually pretty nice. Right. I saw a tweet from Elliot Sadler. Uh, it was a few weeks ago. And he was like, man, it's so nice sitting, not sitting here on my couch. Car. Yeah, right. not being in that hot-ass car. I'm just here drinking my beer. Exactly. So, yeah, that's, that's got to be nice when you get out of that car. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Why would you go back? Right. Oh, got to ask Mark Martin, I guess. <laughs> yeah, exactly, man. Yeah, so... so uh, Ian, what do you got for us for a lightning round? Oh, Question, yeah, the lightning round. Jeez. Uh, uh, man, do you see... Uh, I don't know. Do you see Chase Briscoe possibly, like, with this momentum that he had from this race, do you see him getting another win this season? I think he certainly could. Um, He's kind of pulling one of those things where he's putting together a little momentum streak here right at the right time of the season. You want to get hot as a playoff starts. You see what that did for Joey Logano last year, being a guy that we all thought for sure it was going to be a combination of the big three in the Cup Series last year, and it was none of them that won the title. So Mm -hmm. the way this playoff format pays off, it pays the guy who gets uh, the hottest and the most consistent in the playoffs. So if you can win and you can run consistently, you are going to have a chance to be there at home set and give yourself a chance to win. He's doing that at the right time. So I don't see why he can't get another win this year. Right. I don't know exactly if he'll get a win, but I still see Chase Briscoe as the dark horse, as the fourth guy to get into the homestead round because it's been fast these past couple of months. Ever since he really got that win at Iowa, he really started to turn on the Jets. He's competitive week in, week out. I don't know if he's got the speed to go up there and really battle Christopher Bell in like a mile and a half, but I guess we'll just have to wait and see. So I don't know if he'll get a win, but... Strong. I have really strong feelings that Chris uh, uh, Chase Briscoe could be that dark horse fourth driver in the championship four. Okay. Very possible. So, All right. All right. Um, my lightning round question for you guys, something you talked about in the race recap. Being a fan of him, I was very surprised by because him being a veteran driver, you just don't see stuff like this from him. Um, are we starting to see Justin Allgaier unravel a little bit? Because he's in a point in the season here where he's still in it in the points to try to make a championship run here, which is very possible for him, but he's got no wins. And what I saw, my interpretation of that, I don't want to say it was a desperation move. That might be a little strong, but it looked like a guy, like when you see athletes in other sports, like forcing things. It looks right. like he was forcing yeah. things. He wasn't being his normal, calm, cool, collected 
aggressive but smart self that he normally races as. Right. So do you guys think he's unraveling, or do you just think that was just a bonehead move in a, in a tough situation? It could go either way. I get how it could be a bonehead move because the, the roll hole makes for a lot of boneheaded mistakes, but you, you said it perfectly. Justin Allgaier doesn't have a win yet, and it, it's just kind of embarrassing for the organization from where he was last year to this year. He just really hasn't been showing up. The speed's been there. He just can't really put races together. He can't finish them. He's always finding his way to get into trouble. So I don't know if he's unraveling, but maybe we actually are seeing a little bit of he's downgrading a little bit and he's starting to get in these desperation modes because it's got to be very frustrating to be in a junior motorsports ride and you know you're fast and you're not winning races. Right. Yeah, I, I mean, after seeing the season that he had last year, what, he had five, six wins on the season last year? Yes, I'm he was, yeah, he like was that. on a freaking tear. Um, so, yeah, it's really weird to see him go from, like, you know, one of the best drivers last year to, like, you know, what you the know, hell what, is what going happened? on? And so yeah, he's still, like, fourth in points or something, right? Like fourth yeah. or fifth in points. It's just he's not winning. Right. And we're used to, we're accustomed to seeing Justin Allgaier get that seven-card victory lane. Right. I think he just might have it, like, in the back of his head, like, you know, I need the win. I was winning. Like, you know, why am I not winning? And then, you know, it's just getting in his head, and that's probably why he's not winning. So I I think he needs to just, you know, chill, take it easy. You're still in one of the most competitive cars in the series. You're still doing great in points. So, I don't know, just take it easy. You got, you know, you're going to be getting, what, how many races until the elimination? I think the Xfinity is one more. The Xfinity right, is yeah. first eliminations are next. next yeah, because they're like over. they're one weekend off from the Cup. So like yeah. this was a an elimination race. Theirs is the next one. So they kind of got to stay. Because then they have that okay. off week because they don't race Talladega and then they'll right. be back to close up the rest of the season. Right. right. Yeah. Just going back to the All Guyer thing, I, I put it to you guys in a different way. Like you guys know me. I grew up. I played hockey. Um, and this happens at goal scores. I think sometimes too. Um, go through a rut where you're not scoring goals you're hitting the post or you're just not you know shooting well or whatever it is um you feel that a little bit so then you start forcing them you're taking shots you don't normally take you're shooting when you'd pass and vice versa things like that i that's to me what it looks like he's doing a little bit i feel like he should be mentally in a better place because he's really in a good spot as far as the points concerned going into this next round right but at the same time you know he's feeling that pressure not getting a win so how do you balance that you would think a veteran driver like him would have a have an answer for that. So I just I hope that's something that's coming, but it didn't really look like it at the Roval. It looked like I said a guy that's kind of just forcing it a little bit, doing stuff he wouldn't normally do. Oh yeah, without a doubt. And we know road courses he can get it done because yeah. man, he had one hell of a season last year with those road right. courses. Right, exactly, yeah. exactly. I wonder if he just saw this as you know being a road course a golden opportunity for him and pushed right. it when he shouldn't have. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, but I don't think this is the end of Justin Allgaier. Oh, no. Think, He's back next year for sure. Right? Oh, yeah, without yeah. a doubt. I think, you know, th- th- there's always a possibility that he can get a win on the yeah. season this year, but I don't know. This is not his year. I don't even see him making it into the Final really. Yeah, he's kind of downgraded that for me for these past few weeks. Yeah. Says, Can't say I disagree, yeah. You have to win at some point, I think, to really get yourself into the Final Four. Maybe not as much for Xfinity as for Cup, but you want to win your way into the Final Four. Right. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. now, to me, I don't know, it's kind of more, looking more like either Noah or Chase. Chase that's what I was just getting ready to spot. say. Yeah. Oh, Gregson has been hot this season in the Xfinity Series. Well, really, these past couple months he's really turned it on mm-hmm. getting these top fives top tens he's a really solid driver just like chase briscoe these two guys are heating up at the right time so if one of them can squeak their way in there just small guys on the outside looking in yeah I exactly agree. i'm nowhere near ready to give up on all guy by any stretch for making the championship four because i think all it takes is him to finally get that one win and the monkey's off that back and he's yeah. driving free and easy and he could rattle off two three in a row Wouldn't oh yeah be the first time we've seen something like he that could have happen. a reddick season right. and win the championship who exactly. the hell knows all right, let's get into the Cup Series, boys. We had William Byron starting it off on the pole. This is just like the, this is the season of William Byron on the pole. It's just when is the kid gonna, when's he gonna finally pull through and get that win? Because he sat on like five poles, six poles this season. It's ridiculous. Right, and the second pole in a row at Charlotte's yeah. so yeah. basically swept it this season. He's showing that he can make the race car go fast, and I know that sounds really simple, but you know <laughs> what? 
it's a skill. It's oh, something yeah. you need to be a NASCAR driver, to be a race car driver. Um, he's showing that he has raw speed. Now it's just time to put it together for a full race. Exactly. When it comes down to and it he, he showed he had the speed in the part of the yeah. first stage before yeah. that. They called uh -huh. that caution. Right. Oh, man. Yeah. Chad Knauss was so pissed at that. And I don't that. blame him. Yeah. yeah. That was it was another example of why are we throwing the caution here? Like, nobody this had any inconsistencies. Idea. Yeah. No, we can right. that. But his Hendrick Motorsport teammate, Alex Bowman, did not get off to the best start. Nope. <laughs> yeah. Making friends in the first lap. lap yeah. one. Uh, and Bowman was like 17 points out when this race started. So, not the day he was... Not what he was kind of hoping to start his day off with. Right. And then Jones, Bowman, Hamlin, Johnson, and Bush are all spin together, ending Eric Jones' race, ending his playoff runs. I hate it for the kid. Two years in a row, this kind of stuff happens, but he didn't get it done in the first three races. Not to say that those weren't his fault. They weren't his fault. No. Mechanical no. at Vegas. He uh, failed was, post race. That was on his team for failing inspection last week. Mm -hmm. Right, and then for to get caught up in someone else's mess, man. Right, it's unfortunate because I thought Eric Jones was really going to have some momentum after that that Southern Five Hundred. Right, exactly. You hate it for the kid because you know it's another one of those situations where he's a really talented race car driver. I think he's shown a lot of promise this season for oh, yeah. uh, you know just really show what kind of career he can have. Right. But to have this kind of failure here again, he races for Joe Gibbs Racing. Coach Gibbs is not going to play around if he doesn't perform. He's got Christopher Bell breathing down his neck. The instant that somebody shows that they don't belong at Joe Gibbs, they'll They're cut wrong. him and they got somebody waiting in the wings. Oh, yeah. He'll have no problem letting him go and watching him flourish for another race team because he's got another superstar driver just waiting in the wings, waiting for an opportunity. I mean, hell, they kicked out Matt Kenseth to bring yeah. in. Eric Jones. Well, I just think the Kenseth thing was a little bit of money, too, but it's the yeah. same thing. When there's somebody ready for you, they're going to get you out and put yeah. him in there. So, yeah, it just stunk for me. Um, you know, one of our good buddies that we watch races with is a big Jones fan, too. Jones! So, yep, so <laughs> hurts, our, uh, hurts our racing family a little bit, too. Oh, so, yeah. yeah. You always hate it for one of your buddies' drivers right. to, like, you know, get into it or they get eliminated. You know, everything week for me so yeah. <laughs> right, I'm, I'm feeling for you man yeah <laughs> that record's starting to get a little old and scratchy yeah the uh the curse of the michael walter die cast continues we had <laughs> daniel hemrick all the way up to p8 at one point during the race and it wasn't due to pit cycle just he drove his way up there a little bit of strategy play but he drove up in the top 10 looked consistent he had a really yep. great race you know up until the last lap right i mean and then we had some dan on dan crime as far as <laughs> the second <laughs> this season, Daniel Suarez is taking out Daniel right. Henrik because his dumbass ah, pisses me off, man. Because he, we just can't finish races anymore. That has killed us, man. Our finishes throughout that round were terrible. Finished 33rd at Indy, 33rd here. Like, I am sick of this, man. Nico angry. <laughs> yeah, very angry. I'm going to throw his helmet at the camera here in a second. <laughs> hey, hey, I hey, apologize. Hey, hey. I didn't know I was going to send Nick off in that kind of tirade. Oh. <laughs> so, I thought I was the one having the heart attack. My emotions were up, down, up, down, up, down. Oh, yeah, I'm yeah. watching Ryan Blaney <laughs> and so were my bush lattes going up, down, up, down, helping the nerves. Kind it's just of. the same old yeah. week in and week out and this is why he's getting canned at the end of the season. <laughs> <laughs> Like, oh, God man. damn it, man. Just one race. I'm sorry, Michael Waltrip. I am sorry, St. James Hospital. That is a fantastic looking race car that you put on the racetrack. Just stop the curse of the eight for me, please. God damn it. Like I said, I think it's going to take, you're going to have to donate to JDRF or something. And it's going to, you know what you're going to have to do? It's going to have to be like $88.88, 88 just all eights to get off the board. Or zero eight zero eight. Oh my or something God. Like that. They're going to look like, did the kid just send us $8.08 .08 with a note saying, I'm sorry, Daniel Emmerich? <laughs> Help me, please. <laughs> please help them. Oh no. my God. Oh, man. Okay. All right, kind of transitioning. We had a little uh, drama going on yeah. with uh, Bubba Wallace and Alex Bowman. Bubba 
Uh, you know, he told old Bowman, hey, you're number one on the track for, for a few... three laps? Yeah, yeah. For three laps. And you're then, really number one for three laps. Oh, yeah. Right? yeah. And then uh, Bowman, he just got tired of it and spun Bubba coming yeah. out of the backstretch chicane. Could have cost himself his own race right, right there. Oh, yeah. That was stupid. And going back to Bubba telling him uh, he's numero uno, it's something, being a Bubba fan, I can tell you. Um, we'll get into a lot more of it in uh, the Gambler's Gossip Corner a little later, but... Um, this isn't something that just stemmed from this race. Um, this isn't the first, second, or third time Alex Bowman's driven way too aggressive, way too early in a race, and it ended up costing Bubba or somebody in that same kind of position damage, um, something along those lines. I know he's done it to Bubba a couple a couple times in the last month or two. So this isn't well, one, they got one time. Yeah, there's a little history behind that, too. It's not just a one-race deal. Yeah. So. Yeah, and then you know what he did with Austin Dillon last right. week. That was that was stupid getting into turn one, exactly. and then also stupid by Dillon's crew chief to tell him to wreck him. And you know what? Wasn't his crew chief? They had uh, Mr. Childress so oh, yeah. wreck him. Yeah, yeah that's, that's a, right. <laughs> when you get orders from boss man, you can't say no to pop, him. Pop, you can't yeah. say no to him, man. That's boss pop, man, pop, 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 not yeah. boss man. Yeah. yeah. When they're the same person, your grandpa and your owner are telling you what to do. Yes, sir. Yeah. But you know, going back to Bowman though, I just don't like. It's two weeks in a row he put a non-playoff driver in a position to end his season for emotional reasons. Right. Um, getting into it with Stenhouse, getting into it with uh, with Bubba. Listen to me. As a Bubba fan, those guys do not matter to you there. You need to go out there and run their race. God forbid one of them put you into the wall so bad you were done for the race. That's your season. You're a fringe driver right now to go to the next round. So you put yourself in a position like that, it shows me a lack of maturity. I yeah. want to see a driver in that situation. Okay, he's giving me the middle finger, a big deal. I have a way faster race car. I'm going to go right around him and go to the front of the field like I probably should. Right. We talked about it uh, kind of as we were watching the race, too, together. He had the kind of car that could have won the race. Exactly. So you're getting into a Bubba, spending time under green, messing with somebody that's got no real implication for your season. What are you doing? Just silly. He could have been in victory lane. Who the hell knows? Who knows? Yeah, I mean, yeah, he yeah. rebound. He finished second. That was really impressive. Right. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah. But Got himself in the playoffs. Yeah, he's back still. in he's in the yeah. next round now. So yeah. Right. Yeah. I honestly don't know if he would have had anything for Chase because Chase was just the best. Oh, player. my God. Well, but, he's the new road right. course ringer. Yeah. Him and Truex are the new Tony yeah, and Gordon. Yeah, yeah but you know what? You'll never know now with Bowman. So. Exactly. Had a little problem with Chase. I thought he won the stage and then he pulled a Brad Keselowski. Yeah. yeah. Except He's lucky. He just wanted to see how yeah. safe that safer He's barrier was. Lucky. If those are the same tire barriers from last year, oh, his day is done. And we're yep. just thinking, like, if Chase got enough points, he's going to be okay. Which I still think he would have been okay. But yeah, because I think he was it, mathematically in yeah. at the end yeah, of that he stage. Would, yeah, he already so, so, yeah, uh, but... <laughs> But then he just he just rallied, passed Har drove back up through the field, passed Harvick with six to go. Yeah. His man on a mission, got the win. So yeah, Chase Elliott. He's lucky that was like a soft, safer barrier. Right. Like yeah. what did they even use? Uh toilet paper had to be. Yeah, That's right. Charmin. Oh, yep. it was oh, so yeah. so, like he <laughs> went in there and there was like literally no they had yeah. to put like a little bit of tape on the hood. It looked and like he hit like, like a like a trampoline, like it hit him, and he shot from whatever gear he was in back to reverse faster than you can say the word Roval. Oh, so yeah. it was crazy. I've never seen anything like that before. So, But you know what? Shout out to Charlotte Motor Speedway and the Roval crew for getting that set up oh, that yeah. way. You know that's going to be a treacherous turn. Um, it doesn't have its own nickname for nothing. So <laughs> The heartburn turn. Right. So to be able to see those guys go in there like that and actually keep up racing and give a guy a chance to still win, I thought was pretty cool. Oh, yeah. yeah. yeah that was amazing. Right. And then, yeah, he goes on to win the race, and then he uh, does a burnout, right? And that's right, right in the spot and does a little ghost rider. Oh, yep. Ghost ride the whip. Okay, yeah. I see you. Does Chase. a little. Uh, are you not uh, entertained? You not entertained? Yeah, that was awesome. Yeah. That's gonna be a meme and gift worthy uh, little shot for the next couple of years. I oh, think. without so, a yeah. doubt. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. No, that was, that was a great moment for right. sure. So. But then uh, the little uh, playoff action. We had Newman missing the chicane. Yes. Uh, racing uh, Eric Almarola really hard, mm -hmm. and it, then. Yeah. Uh, Gave Bowman the chance to run into the round Still, of 12. Shout right. out to that six team. I mean, yeah. I've been a real non-supporter ever since they dumped Trevor, but we all knew the six car was not fast last year. But Ryan Newman, what, what he's done with that team this year, he finished his races. He doesn't score enough points in the stages. He'll give you a good finish. He'll give you a good average right. finish. Oh, yeah. And that's what got him here, and that's what almost got him through to the right. next round. He, missed it by one point. He always gets hot in the playoffs, too, man. Whenever, like, you know, 
He, he always turns up the heat. Yeah. He was fast everywhere we went in the first round. Oh, it's yeah. Just, he just didn't have enough points there in the end. Maybe that just comes down to, man, if I would have just gotten two, three stage points in the regular season, who knows? Who knows what would have happened. Yeah. Right. But you know what, though, like you said, putting our own reasons for having adversarial opinions of the six team aside, that's a hell of a round for uh, for Ryan Newman there. I mean, he took a team with that was not fast list last year for, again, in my opinion, for reasons that don't have anything really to do with Trevor. But Ryan Newman got in that car and made them go from a, a mid-pack team to their run in 15th on in almost every race weekend now. Oh, yeah. So um, I think that's going to be one of those things. Assuming he's back in the six next year, though, I think they're just going to get better and better every oh, year. Oh, I'm so, sure he will. Yeah. He's bringing in the sponsorships right? for that team. That's a big part of it, too. Let's look at the sponsors he brought in. you got Acorns there, now Oscar Mayer, so on and so forth. I mean, he's brought in so many different sponsors for a team that lacked funding that was running 401k cars, basically. Right. Trevor, where he had Ford <laughs> EcoBoost on there or... Roush Fenway or Roush Yates or whatever right. on there. And now they've had a sponsor every weekend. So it, hats yeah. off to that team. Yeah, hats off to them. Ryan. Um, you got a lot of respect for me for everything you pulled off of this year. So, Oh, yeah, for sure. Right. And then, uh, yeah, on the final lap, uh, Newman was getting a little heated, trying to yeah. like, you know score a good finish so he could move on. But he uh, got loose, got into old Daniel Suarez, and then... Suarez, I think we already talked about this. Suarez no, got into Hemrick. Don't get me going again. Yeah. Yeah. Don't want to do it. So, we're just going to keep on moving. Yeah, we're, we're going to keep, keep on moving after yeah, that. Yeah, we're going to keep the lion in his cage over here. Yeah, and then a little uh, fun, uh, funny stuff going on with Kyle Busch uh, before they bring up the <laughs> yeah, that's my back. That's my lightning round question okay. right there. So, yeah, what's your guys' thoughts on that? It lo- he said he did it because he broke the soy bar, which I get it. So yeah, I, It now makes more sense to me because when I yeah. first saw it, I was just like, what the f***? Is he just quitting right now? Right. Like you don't do that for your sponsors, man. But he's in a position where he's forty-five points to the good. He's does not care. Why right. tear up my car even more? Why try and risk somebody else? Yeah, for me that's what it is. It's the balancing act of there's a couple of different ways to look at it. Um, the intelligent way, which I'm going to give Kyle Busch a pass on all this for. Um, he didn't want to wreck his race car anymore, which means less time in the shop for his guys to work on a race car for no reason. And a track like the Roval, it's already treacherous enough. You don't need a beat-up race car out there. So right. all he's going to do is hurt someone else's day. God forbid another playoff driver. Right. That's something he didn't want to do. Um, it sucks for you know, M&Ms. It sucks for the fans that come out and pay money to see him race because he's gone off the racetrack in a situation where he should still be running laps per se. But I understand where he's coming from. It was hot as hell at the Roval. He's already in. He ain't got shit to lose from this. Right. Um, so, and I think, like I said, in a weird way, it was the classy thing to get yourself out of the way to not potentially cost another driver their day. Yeah, exactly. You don't want to ruin anyone's day. So, exactly. yeah, smart move by him. You know, I, I, at first I was like, what the hell is he doing? You know, right. we didn't really see, like, anything happen with him to right. take him out of the race. And I right. saw on Twitter he pulled into the pit road yeah. uh, the wrong way, right. actually. Yep. But, you know, he probably couldn't have made it around the whole track right. before they flew the red flag so he just thought this is the quickest way to get in yeah i don't think nascar really cared that it didn't would, really yeah. seem like nothing like that i didn't see nascar him. say anything about him right. doing that so he's fine and we'll move on to right the, that was my him. only big question with that whole incident just what you touched on there was going the wrong way down pit road i don't know Obviously, in most other tracks, if you do that, it's going to be some kind of penalty. You're going to get black flagged or maybe even after the race, suspend or uh, dock points or something right. along those lines because you're, you're putting people in a lot of dangerous situations, per se, going the wrong way down pit road. You don't know if there's cars coming off the back stretch right. coming down there. Exactly. But at the same time, with it being the Roval, with it being kind of a quirky track, with it being a road course, per se, so you know, you've got a longer track, um, don't know if he's going to make it around. I don't know what was discussed in the drivers' meetings. I don't know if that's something that they allow. Right. So that part, we, you know, I would like to see a little clarification from. I don't know if that's something I'd be able to find, but it might be perfectly what they want them to do there. We just don't know. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so, we got, got for lightning so my lightning round question, you're seeing Chase Elliott really turn into one of those kind of complete drivers who's able to put it together on just about every kind of track. Um He's won, He's turned into a road course ringer. He's one of the intermediates. He's one of the super speedways. Um, he hasn't put it together fully at a short track yet, but he's shown promise of being able to do so. 
Is he a car that you guys see going into the championship four with just how how crowded that last round will be? I think you kind of have to put him there. I mean, this next round for Chase is going to be a great round over Talladega, Kansas. He's won right. all three of those racetracks before. And then Martinsville, he damn near won back in 2017. So Chase is going to be a force to be reckoned with, and I don't see why he, why he won't right. be in that Final Four. It's just going to take... He's probably going to have to go up there. He's going to have to beat Joey Logano. He's going to have to beat a Martin Truex Jr., which I think he can do. He's yeah. just had, he's oh, had yeah. a really good solid season so far. So, yeah, why not? Exactly. I mean, we've seen him win at some of the toughest tracks on the schedule. He got his first ever win at Watkins Glen. Right. He's won at Dover. He's won at Talladega. So, yeah, they're, without a doubt. Like, he can make his way into the Final Four, especially after winning this Roval race, which is, without a doubt, the, the hardest, hardest track. track. Right. So, I think he proved it that, yeah, I'm a championship four contender, and I kind of regret not putting him in there. Right. <laughs> but there's a lot of there's a lot of good names that we can right. put in there. It's it's a crazy competitive season, and I love it. Exactly. It's probably one of the most competitive seasons I've watched in a while. Yeah. Exactly. You can make a case for seven or even eight of all the guys that – could potentially go to the round of eight to be championship four oh, yeah. or championship drivers. Think about it. You got Kyle Busch, Kevin, or Denny Hamlin, Martin Truex Jr., Kevin Harvick, Logano, Kozlowski, Chase, so on and so forth, Kyle Larson, Ryan Blaney. All these different guys, if they win at the right time to get hot, all of them basically can have a, 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 a stake at saying they have a chance to be a champion. Oh, yeah. So exactly. when you go from that round of the eight to the round of four, there's going to be some heavyweight contenders getting cut here. Oh, so, yeah. There's a chance uh, Chase Elliott could be on the inside looking out at a lot of people that are envious of his position. I really think he could do it, yeah. for sure. Oh, yeah. All right, here so. we go. All right, so with everything that happened with Bubba and Bowman, is Bubba going to get Bowman back? <laughs> and where? Well, I don't think, think so, no. because he doesn't want to be the one to take out a playoff driver. If Alex Bowman gets eliminated in the playoffs, then maybe he does. Yeah, but right. You don't want to be that guy already driving for an, a kind of an underfunded team. You don't want to be that guy that takes off a playoff driver because that's just going to make you look bad. So I don't think he will. Okay. Right. I agree. Listen, Bubba's a fiery guy. He tells you what he thinks. Um, if you don't want to know, don't ask, because he's going to tell you whether or not it's what you want to hear or not. Right. He wears his heart on his sleeve and his emotions on his sleeve. So you're not going to have to wonder whether or not Bubba's mad, happy, overjoyed. You can tell. Oh, yeah. Um, I think a little bit of the emotions poured over in the race, or after the race, and that's something we'll talk about later. But just like Nick said, unless Bowman does something else ridiculous during like a, a future race where he gets into Bubba again for no reason, I can't see Bubba being that guy where he's going to try to take a championship uh, contending driver or a playoff contending driver out of a chance to move on. I just don't see that happening for Bubba. Yeah, right. I think he can be a little emotional at times, but I don't think he's stupid. Yeah. Yeah, I'm kind of right there, too. Like, you know, if some, if Bowman gets eliminated and then right. they kind of meet somewhere exactly. like Martinsville, <laughs> right? Bowman gives him a few bumps. Right. I, I wouldn't be surprised if Bubba went and took him out. Yeah, I can see it being something that spills in the next year for sure. Oh, yeah. This is not over. Oh, well, no. I ain't afraid to take people out. He took Kyle Busch out. Yeah, he took his yeah. old boss out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He ain't that afraid. is true. That is true. Yeah, but I just think he's not gonna do no, anything to really affect yeah. anyone's season like that. No, he, not Kyle yet. Bush, yeah, Kyle Bush, it doesn't matter. He's oh, playing I, already, so don't take it. Right. Yeah, I think that'll do it for our race review, boys. Right. Got anything else to add? No, I think we're good. All right. Well, for the stock car spectacle race review, I'm Ian Jordson. I'm Mike Gamble, and I'm Nick Kinsel. We'll see you next time.